everybody, welcome back. We're gonna expand a little bit on what we did in the previous tutorial where we built this page where when we click on these links, we load some external content, but we also have some effects, some subtle fading in and fading out. Now, one of the problems that we had is, is you know, when you're dealing with jQuery, you're dealing with events. And so the event is when something happens. So when I click on a link, that's an event. And when that event happens, then we have stuff or code that runs. So in this case, it's fading things in and out and loading data. And so the problem with this example is, is when I hit refresh, when the visitor first comes to this page, nothing is loaded and nothing is selected. This may be okay. This may be fine. This may be what you want and you want the user to start interacting. But let's say you want something previously selected and you want to go ahead and load that external content in. Well, what do you do? Well, you could already assign this in the HTML and you could already have this loaded and then just have the jQuery take care of it from there. But Let's go ahead and do this from the jQuery because we can add some effects to it and things if we want. So again, what happens is when you refresh the page, nothing is previously loaded. So what we're going to do is let's go back over to our scripts.js file. And remember, you need an event for something to happen. Well, we already have a built-in event. We don't need another load function because this Google set on load callback function basically means when the page is loaded or more specifically when, when the Google jQuery stuff is loaded. Let's just drop a couple lines and it's really easy. All I have to say is we we have to do two things. We have to make that link. Let's go back so you can see. We need to select this first link. So that needs to be selected. So we need to add a class to it and we need to load the content. So let's do those two things. The first thing we're going to do is very simple because this all happens once it's loaded. So all I have to do is just say dollar sign parentheses single quotes pound link one and we're going to say dot add class with a capital C and then parentheses we're going to the class we're going to add is going to be selected make sure that's in single quotes so this class selected so that's all we have to do so now when I go back here and refresh the page yes indeed we do have the first link selected okay because I just told it to do that the second thing we need to do is add that content in there so what I'm going to do is drop another line we're going to say dollar sign and let's say in parentheses let's do the target div so we're going to do single quotes pound target and what we're going to do is say dot load and in parentheses and in single quotes, where's the content? It's in the content folder slash one dot html. Add a semicolon and we're done. So now we can go back over, reload the page and lo and behold, we have our first link set up. It really is that easy. One thing I'm going to be really anal retentive here is this does not maintain the consistency that we've set up. So when we click a link and we get this animation of the thing fading in and out. So when I refresh the page, it just loops in there right at the top. There's no fading. So anyway, what if you want to add that fading in there? Well, we do it just like we did with the with the click events for the links. OK, what I'm going to do is let's uh, let's take that target out for just a second. And what I'm going to say here is we're going to use the callback. So remember, the callback basically is built into the function, and it means do the next thing once the first is completed. So it makes sure that it completes each event before you do the next. So what we're going to do is say dollar sign, parentheses, single quotes, pound target. That's the ID of the div we want to target. And this is basically the same thing we did in each one of these links. We're going to say dot fade out with a capital O. Fade out, and let's say fast. And uh, this basically guarantees that it is faded out because we can't fade in if it's not faded out. And then once that's complete, we're going to say comma, function. Now remember your syntax, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open curly brace, close curly brace. In between the two curly braces, let's drop a line. So when that's complete, what we're going to do is say target, uh, single quotes, pound target. And we're going to say dot load. And this is where we load the content. So in single quotes, content slash one dot html and then when that's loaded we're going to have another callback so i'm going to put a comma for the second argument here and we're going to say function so remember we're nesting functions so make sure your syntax is clear here uh, open parenthesis close parenthesis open curly brace close curly brace i'm going to drop a line between the two curly braces and we're going to say once that's complete uh, we're going to say single quote pound a target we're going to say fade in with a capital I, fade in, and let's fade it in slow. Oops, spell it right. And we don't need a callback here because that is complete. Let's put a semicolon. And then technically, you should have semicolons behind these parentheses too. So you might want to add them if your code editor did not automatically. And this should work. So now when I go back over here, save the file, refresh the page. 
and there it is, it fades in. So what we have now is a complete set where all our effects are consistent. When the page is loaded, the visitor is going to get a nice fade in when they come to the page. And it adds a nice little layer of um, oh, interactivity a little bit, uh, but it gives some effects. It makes things slow. It gives you some transitions. You know, in the old days, this used to be only possible by using Flash, and you had to go in and actually use keyframes to do your animation, or you had to use JavaScript, or excuse me, action scripting. And now that these things are built into frameworks like jQuery, it makes it really easy and really nice to do. The only thing that's different now is we're not dealing with a timeline like we did in Flash. What we're doing now is we're using those callback functions. So basically when the first event is completed, you use the callback version to bring the second one in, and that's how it's done. Uh, some basic, easy JavaScripting, and uh, that's basically how it works. So anyway, I hope you find this useful, and I'll see you guys in the next movie.